Stem cells, of course, are been a huge topic in research for a number of years now because of the huge potential they provide in generating a renewable source of cells for a range of medical problems. Now, there's been a lot of new types of stem cells and a lot of emphasis that's been done on the biology of stem cells. And more and more recently, people are starting to realize that the biology is very important, but you need more and more of the um, engineering of, of, of the surrounding environment to be able to direct what these cells wind up doing. So typically these cells are in, in the body in an environment that um, is very active and provides a very um, a diverse number of signals to them, and that tells the cell what it should do. Now, with respect to how we want to go about engineering this environment, um, there's been a lot of um, recent work, and there's a, there's a number of different types of work that has been done. For example, with the stem cells, we want to be able to um, be able to engineer how these cells communicate with each other beyond just um, putting them in a dish and then looking at them. So there's engineering approaches that have been developed to do that. So one of the work that uh, we have done, for example, is to be able to make little microfabricated structures that we can put these cells in and we can control how these cells come together and literally with this um, microfabricated um, system, we can control how the cells start communicating with each other and how many cells are um, formed um, into a little cluster or an aggregate. Now with stem cells, um, we know that things like what, uh, how many neighbors they see in their surrounding is very important. And with these engineering systems, we can control that very fine, finely. So some of the work that we've shown, for example, it shows that if you have a lot of the embryonic stem cells um, collected together, then they start communicating with each other and forming things that have a more tendency to become heart cells. Now, if you have fewer of these things together, they have a tendency to become more blood, blood vessel-like cells. And if you look at what exactly causes this, and you go back and study the biology of what, what, what this engineering enables, you see that because of the engineered systems that we make, now these cells sense a different environment, they start talking to each other with different signals, and that tells the cell whether they should become heart cells or blood vessel cells based on the number of neighbors that they have. So that's one example. There's other things that uh, one can do with engineered um, and engineering systems um, and applications to, um, to stem cells. So for example, one of the things that is becoming more and more important is really um, understanding um, how engineering things like um, uh, really understanding uh, um, all the components of a um, biological system, whether it's all the genes or all the proteins, it affects the cell. So people take understanding that we take from um, um, proteomic data and genomics data where you have lots of information come in. And what we can do now with that is actually try to use the same kind of concepts we use for, let's say, electrical circuits and engineering, electrical engineering circuits. We use the same kinds of concepts to make logic of all this complexity that, that comes in. So that's um, a computational approach where you use computational um, sciences and computational engineering to regulate what the, uh, the internal aspects of the cell are doing and try to come up with diagrams of um, and um, same kind of time scales and same kind of dynamics of what turns on and off as you would in an electrical engineering circuit. Now you can apply to a, a stem cell um, um, bioengineering gene circuit. So those are some two examples. One is how you can work, apply engineering within the cell and one how you can apply engineering outside the cell to control what the cells wind up doing. There's other ways in which engineering and stem cell biology can interface. For example, we know from a lot of bioengineering that you can take um, different approaches and control things like um, a presentation of molecules to um, surrounding environment. For example, you can take degradable particles and encapsulate biological molecules like different kinds of signaling proteins and different kinds of um, um, other kinds of hormones and then be able to release these from uh, these particles um, in a slow way. So you can take the same kind of particles and apply it to stem cells so that you can take 
either individual cells or aggregates of cells, and then be able to release these um, growth factors to the cells in the proper way so that you direct what they do. You can have it, you can engineer these particles, for example, so that um, they release one type of molecule very rapidly and then they release another molecule slowly so that you can get the same kind of um, patterns, expression patterns that these cells would be exposed to during um, normal development or in a biological setting where it first tells the cell, the first signal tells the cell what to do and then the second signal tells the cell uh, what it should do next and you can try to recreate that kind of environment on these cells. There is other approaches in which we can take, um, let's say, um, different types of peptides or proteins and actually engineer materials that um, tells the cell what it should do. Um, so we can make materials which either through their um, biochemical um, presentation of molecules, whether they have particular growth factors attached to them, or through the mechanical aspects of the material itself, whether the material is stiff so that it looks like it's in a bone environment, or, or whether the material is soft so a stem cell thinks it's in the fat environment. Based on those things, we can signal the cells about what it should do and what it should become. There are other ways where we, we can have um, bioengineered environments that can um, direct the stem cells. For example, uh, what we can do with, um, with different cell types like um, mesenchymal stem cells is that we can make fluidic channels, microfluidic systems, where we can have, um, uh, let's say, an endothelial layer, and we can flow solution on top of these, and then have these mesenchymal stem cells um, literally roll on these blood vessels, and then see how these um, um, mesenchymal cells interact with the blood vessels, and then um, these cells, how they migrate into the tissue, all in an engineered environment that can tell us about the biology of, of these cells and uh, what kind of molecules you need for them to get captured in particular sites and get migrated. And, and you can imagine that that kinds of therapies may be relevant for if you want to uh, be able to make a cell source that you can transplant, um, directly inject into the blood, and then the cells would go all over and then would find where the disease is or where the defect is and would simply migrate to that. So you don't have to make a tissue, but you engineer the cell um, and you can study the cell in a way that you understand how it can home or target particular tissues. So those are some ways in which um, engineering can be applied to stem cell biology and it, it ranges from all the way from trying to understand the biology of the stem cells to um, engineering the surrounding of the stem cells to understanding how external signals uh, can translate to differences. Uh, can translate to differences in the in the genes inside the cells, um, and be able to model that using um, different kinds of engineering approaches. And of course, and these are some examples, but you can think about other ones. For example, um, like using engineering approaches to be able to image um, stem cells in the body in their appropriate microenvironment so that you can see the stem cells if you, uh, if you um, label them properly, you can see them go to the bone marrow, you can see them come out of the bone marrow, and you can do a lot of this, these things. And those are, again, things that are enabled because of the advances that are made in this engineering um, technologies. So I think there, there's a lot of opportunities in that. Um, I think since we first discovered hematopoietic stem cells, um, there, there's been a lot of um, interaction between the engineering world and um, stem cell biology world right from the beginning when people wanted to take bone marrow and try to um, extract bone marrow and then grow it in culture so that you can have more um, bone um, stem cells that you can transplant to different people. There's been a lot of work in trying to uh, develop bioreactors that you can grow stem cells in and expand their numbers and be able to then transplant them back. And that work that's been going on for many decades now has become more and more um, integrated with the scientific knowledge and understanding of what these cells respond to and how uh, these cells actually see their microenvironment and how we can optimize their environment, uh, whether it's, it's the particular aspects of their microenvironment or whether we can understand these cells better um, with respect to 
modeling their behavior and using computational ways to do it, um, um, and combining it all to come up with better therapies for a range of different things. And some of those have already, um, of course, been translated, like things like bone marrow transplantation, and some of the other ones are yet to be uh, realized. For example, things related to induced pluripotent stem cells and their applications to personalized medicine and a range of other things. So one of the major challenges that people have observed with stem cells, particularly with things like embryonic stem cells and very primitive stem cell sources, is that because they're so primitive, if they're not fully differentiated to mature cell types, then they could uh, form tumors. And now this is something that people have seen a lot with respect to um, stem cells that are um, embryonic stem cells that, that are injected into, let's say, mice and rats, where these embryonic stem cells, not treated, um, not differentiated properly, does do form tumors. Now, how engineering can be applied to solve this problem, I think it goes to a lot of degree about um, how we can use engineering to differentiate cells. So if we can uh, expose the cells um, in a way that they're exposed to an environment that um, uniformly tries to differentiate the cells to different cell types, then we have a better chance of minimizing the number of undifferentiated cells that we have that would form tumors. If you have a, a micro-engineered reactor or a bioreactor, where based on the conditions of the bioreactor, the cells, all the cells see a more uniform environment, then they're more likely to behave uniformly, and let's say all of them would differentiate to the same degree. Now, there are other engineering approaches that we can use to isolate tumor cells um, the ones that have tumorgenic capability from the fully differentiated cells. So we can use engineering approaches to be able to, um, to detect. Um, we can stain the cells for mature um, markers and then see which cells have a mature marker and potentially which cells have immature markers. And based on that, we can develop microfluidic systems where we can rapidly um, capture the ones that are tumorigenic and then be able to separate the ones that are fully differentiated. So I think there's a lot of um, different technologies that one can try to adopt to be able to um, take away the tumor cells or eliminate their, them remaining tumor cells when you're differentiating these cells um, uniformly. And we know from biology that, of course, um, the cells that give rise to the organism have the same properties as these embryonic stem cells. But what happens in biology is that because of the control of the environment, the cells all differentiate properly and they go through the proper stages, whereas what we do in the cultures, if they're not done properly, is that they, we have a population of these primitive cells that remain that could, could go on to form tumors. So we need to um, use the same biological principles and take the engineering approaches to be able to apply the, those principles to the cells so that they don't become tumorigenic. <laughs>